All right, I see what we got. Upgrade a card or get 100 gold. Okay. So I think upgrades are really good on the defects. I think 100 gold is really good as well. I mean, it's it depends on the path. So this path is the shop, but then we have to fight an early elite. Then we have to fight another elite in order to get four rests and a late shop. The alternative is to go here. One. The elite is a little bit more uh, safer. Then we can still get the four rests anyways and a late shop. If we're feeling frisky and our deck is good, we can do another elite at towards the end and a shop. So this is a really good path. I think I'm going to go ahead and upgrade. Because we're not getting an immediate early shop. We could get the 100 gold and get a really late shop. But I think upgrading on this guy is fantastic. So we're going to upgrade the zap. And let's, uh, let's roll. Let's roll. That's unlucky. Grab the really cool for difference. No, because when I'm win streaking, uh, Steve, I don't like... I don't like the last option. The variance of the, the random... The variance of the random boss relic is too high that I don't like doing it when I'm shrieking. Uh, I just don't like doing it in general. On any character, I really don't like rerolling random boss relic. I think Streamline is a really good early card. We saw what Turbo could do, but Turbo makes sense after the fact when you have like high tempo cards to play. I mean, sorry, low tempo cards to play, like Echo Form, Creative AI, or Meteor Strike, Hyper Beam, Sunder. We'll go for the Streamline. That gives us some decent offense. And we're going against Hexaghost. Okay, it's good to know. Four rests are totally worth it. I think it needs to upgrade more than up Yes, exactly. So the four rests are always totally worth it. I, but what I'm trying to say is I'm going to get the four rests anyways, right? But I don't have to fight a elite so haphazardly. So I'm going to get the four rests anyways, but by fighting this elite right here, this could be Gremlin Knob. And if I don't get what it takes to kill Gremlin Knob, my run will probably end here. Either I come out of Gremlin Knob alive with very little life, but then that's, that's going to mean I'm going to have to rest one of one of the things is gonna happen. Either I have to fight the Gremlin Lab, and I'm gonna have to rest. So that's like, it's as if I have three upgrades any only, and then I die is another up possibility. The other possibility is okay, my deck is really good and I can handle it no problem. And in which case I got an extra relic. I'm feeling good. But the risk of this right here, if you ever see a situation like this in Ascension 15, where you have to fight an elite on like the sixth floor with no campfire before or after, this is suicide. This path is just the same amount of rest and upgrades, but without that danger. I just managed to get Madness on Hologram and oh, oh, nice biker. That's my that's one of my favorite things to do. I didn't even realize like that that was a thing until I randomly had that happen to me. And then now when I have Snake Wire, you know, now I buy Madness when I see it in the shop. Basically, if I see Madness in the shop, I buy it. Uh, we have Reinforced Body or we have Boot Sequence Hologram. Okay, these are all very decent cards. They all do different things. So Reinforced Body for me is a nice consistent defense. And I like the consistent defense of Reinforced Body. This is a really solid card. Boot Sequence is a really cheap, free block at the beginning to help you either get set up with certain things you might want to set up or just have better first turns. It's like Anchor in a card, basically. Um, I think Reinforced Body is going to be better just in the long run. You could say Hologram is not bad. In fact, Hologram might be good. Because I have a free upgrade for it. But I'm going to do the Reinforced Body. I think, okay, Boot, boot Sequence is nice. Because it makes your first turns good. And it's good for Slavers. It's good for certain, a lot of fights. The Reinforced Body is going to stay with you. It's not going to leave you. Okay. We get, um... I'm not on that route. Stargazer, no, no. I'm saying that was potential to go on that route, basically. Because I was trying to see whether or not the goal was worth it to get an early shop. And the early shop would lead to that route. Yeah, that's a crazy combo on Phil Tilt. Hologram for Streamline. Hologram is a, a good consideration for Streamline. We will try to get a hologram at some point. But right now, I'm focused on getting consistent defense. Uh, there's a few options here. We can do Axe Kick, Sweeping Beam, or Skim. Now, I'm a big fan of Axe Kick. I think Axe Kick is free, so it allows you to play more cards per turn, because you're drawing 5 cards. It's doing 7 damage for 0, and it's evoking the orb, so the amount of damage this is doing is insane. I mean, it's a very high tempo card. It interacts well with All for One, and with um, Scrape. It also interacts with like things like Kunai and Shuriken, but it also interacts with um, Dark Orbs in a very nice way, because if you have Dark Orbs... There are times where you want to evoke them sooner rather than later, and Axic does that. 
Another thing we can do is skim, because once we get the streamline going, we're going to have a streamline being potentially free. Zap's going to be free. Card draw's always nice. And then Sweeping Beam is AoE, which I don't have right now. And card draw, but I'm going to go for the Axe Kick. I think I like having a balance of some free cards. I generally like to skip this, because, like, okay, if I'm going to go for a late shop, I'd rather skip this. But because the shop's really late, I think removing the strike is super helpful. I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, let's see what we got here. That probably wasn't worth it because now I'm taking two damage. But at least I get streamline going. Taking eight damage of this fight. And GG. It's a situation where Axic is doing crazy damage. And maybe you guys don't like Axic, but I, I found it is actually a really strong card. When it's upgraded, it's 11 damage for zero. Hey, how you doing, Reloading? Why is YouTube streaming a thing? Hands game? Uh, because YouTube has its own little uh, gaming audience, its own little streaming audience. You love the idea of playing X-Cost and then Axic in a Plasma? Yes, I love that as well. Plagiat. Privet. I don't speak Russian, I don't read Russian, but... Hello, man. Alright, so we got Hello World, Cool Headed, or Recycle. Not the greatest cards, right? So, I used to like Cool Headed a lot. I thought it was amazing. Like, wow, this thing gives you Frost, which is like a little metallicized. It gives you card draw, and... Yeah, it's all for one mana, right? But, okay. It's kind of low tempo. Card draw is useful when you start getting zero-cost cards. So, you could argue, okay... This card does dual purpose. This card is good in situations where you could benefit a little bit from the card draw, and also benefit a little bit from the passive block. In which I can do both, right? I could benefit from the, the Frost here and there. I could benefit from the card draw a little bit because I do have Zap, Axe Kick, and when Streamline is going, Streamline is going to be potentially cheaper, so by having card draw, I can play more cards a turn. This also opens up the doorway for things like um, Focus, like Defrags or Consume or whatever. Wait, I have five rest here. I just realized this is one, two, three, four, five, which is insane. Wait a second. Okay, wait a second. We have so many upgrades. This is ridiculous. Okay, so we have... Okay. There's a few things we could do. So right now, we don't have the greatest cards right now. Hey, I've been following for like a week, and I've already seen all the... Flat Keep the hey, thank you, Victor. I appreciate it, man. Is Hello World any good? I hate the idea of flooding the... I don't like Hello World. Some people may... Some people have argued that Hello World... Could be good early game because you're getting decent value out of it because most of the common cards are going to be better than your basic deck. And then you could also argue that Hello World can work well with stack because you're adding more cards and then stack becomes stronger. I've, I've been winning a lot recently and I would say I haven't taken Hello World once. And I really don't like the card. Alongside with Hello World, the cards I don't like, I don't like Storm and I don't like Static Discharge. Greetings from saying, oh, oh, hola, bienvenido, Victor. Okay, so, Axic dual cast reinforced body. I like all these upgrades. Streamline can give me a little bit better offense, and that could be a nice offense to have against both the Elite I'm about to fight and against the Hexagos. So we'll upgrade the Streamline for now. And then, I think reinforced body is a target. I think dual cast can be a target. I think Streamline upgrade was very clutch in the situation because these guys hurt. See, you want to kill this guy right in the back, but then that's kind of taking up a lot of your... Your damage. Damn, this is unfortunate. So I, I kind of like dual cast too, because there's a potential that dual cast kills the guy in the back for free. In which case, I can use streamline to kill this guy. So I'm going to do it. Take the risk. Eek. Okay. That was bad. So I ended up taking 15 damage. I could have just done streamline, reinforced body, and taken a lot, lot less. In fact, the odds of hit, hitting the guy in the back was really low. So I don't recommend doing that in your own games. I like doing Axic here though, just because... Ooh. Yeah, so the Axic is fine here. He has to be full block, right? That's the beauty of Axic Kick. The, 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 look how much value Axic gave me in that situation. It gave me full block in a situ situation I shouldn't have had full block. I'm okay with taking this amount of damage. In fact, I might not even rest.
I don't think we're gonna rest. Okay. We get Beam Cell uh, Capacitor Reprogram. I think Beam Cell is really strong with Streamline. I think Beam Cell makes Axic a little bit stronger. We're running into a situation now that now that we have Beam Cell, we're gonna have less consistent defense. So I gotta be careful. If I pick up this Beam Cell, I gotta make sure I'm consistently defending elsewhere. I mean, I could rest and guarantee this, but because I have all these decent pots, I'm not gonna rest. I think Beam Cell is a very good upgrade. If I'm going against the Triple Sentries, I probably want to upgrade this to get more block. If I'm going against Gremlin Knob, I definitely want to upgrade the Beam Cell. If I'm going, if I'm going against Laga Volan, I probably want to upgrade this too. So there's two elites where I'd probably want to upgrade Reinforced Body. But I'm still doing Beam Cell anyways. And we'll, we'll upgrade uh, Reinforced Body next. Wow, guys, I love this. I don't know if you guys know, but I have Mean Dark Orbs have a little thing going on, right? So, Symbiotic Virus. Guys, the amount of value that this gives you in two turns for free is immense hmm <clears throat> here, here we're gonna do we're gonna do a poison pot i love it electrodynamics is too uh bonkers yeah i know man electrodynamics is insane guys so what's nice about what i have now is that i can use axe kick to evoke the lightning but also now do dual cast to get the dark going only problem is it's kind of making the poison a little bit worse. And I'd rather let the dark scale up a little bit more. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to draw. We're going to defense, defense. Now, I could go ahead and act sick now and not kill the guy in the back. And I would take no damage. You know what? I guess it's worth it. It served its purpose. Poison pot wasn't as effective. But now we're only dealing with two. And we have passive frosts. So I could do things like streamline, reinforce body. And the, the elite is, is it? Is, is one. GG. It's GG. Um, so actually give me five block as opposed to the two, right? So I think Axic is great. You guys should be taking a look at that card more often. Definitely like Axic a lot. And um, yeah, I'm happy I, I upgraded. We're gonna go ahead and upgrade again. And with Hexaghost, you actually don't... Whoa, we got old coin. This run is going insane, guys. This is looking like a 4-0 run. So we get old coin and we have a late shop. Look how much gold we have. This is fantastic. All right, there's a few things we could do here. We could do Steam Barrier and get some more consistent block. Or we could do Self Repair, which gives us sustain. And to me, Self Repair is really strong power. You could argue that Self Repair is not as strong. Um... It's not as strong going to Hexagos because you don't want to heal up that much. I think we can afford another elite. So we have Steric Pot and Fire Pot. So if we're... So what, what, I want you guys to see this. We have Steric Pot and Artifact Potion. You guys know the whole Flex thing. I'm pretty sure if you use Steroid Pot, it operates like Flex. So if you use Artifact Pot, you're getting a Strength Pot. And it's for Strength for the rest of the fight. That's something I could use in Hexagos fight and guarantee Hexagos fight. I could also do it on Gremlin Knob. If this is the Gremlin Knob, I could do that. Get another elite, get another relic. It's a little bit risky. Because I would have to be using my potions. But I think our deck is strong enough. Or we're in a position where, okay, if we do this elite fight, we use some potions. We get another relic. It gives us more power. It's... I'm, do I feel confident that I'm going to beat the Hexagos? Do I have enough damage? If I guess if I keep these potions, I have enough damage. I, I think the fire pot is pretty useful. If it's Laga Vulin... I don't really have that good of a setup. I don't have powers against Lagavulin. I think the Gremlin Knob is probably the easiest for me because we do have we do have uh, the Beam Cell, the Streamline, the Axe Kick, stuff like that. I think we can do the Gremlin Knob. Although the Lagavulin is a little bit. No, I know how two rest available. It's not about whether or not. See, the thing is, I want to maximize my upgrades, right? And I'm about to fight this fought, this Elite with 26 HP. I wonder if I should use the strength artifact thing now. Because I didn't get the greatest first turn. And that's going to be a really nice combo that I could potentially use on the Hexa Ghosts. And I wonder if that's overkill. It's probably overkill because you have Dark Orb as well. So 
So I like using dual cast because it gets light into the front, which means Axe Kick can start doing some stuff. I'll give him some strength, right? And self repair will give me healing. But I like dual cast because it's going to guarantee lethal sooner. That puts Axe that puts Axe Kick to the front. I have lethal next turn, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, I would say the, 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 that the combo was a little un unnecessary. Oh well. I feel a little bit better now to rest though, because I do have Dreamcatcher, which... If I rest, I still get a card. I'm still gonna upgrade. I gotta make sure that I have enough damage to take care of the Hexaghost. So we're gonna upgrade the dual casts, because that's gonna help with the zaps, it's gonna help with the, the darkness. Okay, so we got all for one. Okay, this is an all for one deck. Oh boy, okay. I think all for one is fantastic. Even though it's not like amazing right now, it's gonna be amazing as the game goes on. I think all for one is just great no matter what. I think we're in a good position. I'm gonna take the all for one. I'm gonna remove a strike. You could argue magnetism's not bad, right? So magnetism, here's what it's gonna do. It's gonna give me I'm almost like I'm I'm getting okay, I'm fixing my posture for this one. Magnet I mean all for one gets me excited. So magnetism can give you things like Swift Strike, it can give you things like Finesse, it could give you things like, um... Basically it can give you a lot of zero cost cards that all for one can synergize with. So I think magnetism is not bad. There's also the Bronze Scales, which can guarantee that I get lethal on the Hexaghost and feel okay about it. It's pretty good against the birds. There's Blue Candle, I could use Blue Candle to, um... Allow me to be less curse averse. Um, there's also Turbo with the now... All for one thing that I have is also reprogram for all for one, right? So with reprogram, I could fish out the zero cost cards, discard them, and then use all for one and get a bigger tempo turn. And in that situation, then re turbo and turbo and reprogram are pretty good together. You know, that's a pretty good combo together. Turbo is not a bad pickup either because it allows me to um, potentially play more card more cards per turn. Unfortunately, right now we don't have any high cost cards to balance this out, and we don't have any holograms. But at least Turbo synergizes with Reinforced Body. So that's always nice. I think I'll do the Magnetism because you know Magnetism could also give me Panache, which is pretty good. And I don't know if Reprogram or Turbo is better. I, I like the Turbo. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think I want to rest just to get the card selection. So if we don't rest, we have a weekend for his big hit, right? And then we have to kill him and not take any damage. And I feel like we don't have that much... I guess we do have Frost and Cool Headed. Let me see. This gives me... This makes it easier to play. This gives me more card draw, which is nice with the, the All for One. Huh. Rest for safety? Well, see, the thing about resting is that... Okay, I get to 37 life. And that makes his first attack stronger, because he, his first attack scales off of your life. The life you go into it. And 16 HP, okay, he's probably going to be doing 2 times 6, or... The 2 times 6, I believe, is the lowest. And then from there on, he's going to be doing 6, 6, maybe 8 times 2 sometimes, stuff like that. I think we, have, we can defend here and there. The question is whether or not my damage is enough. I think with Magnetism and All for One doing stuff, I think our damage is going to be enough. I think I'm confident going into this. I mean, there's a little bit of... Hmm. You gotta... Oh, you gotta go Friendly Venice. Hey, take care, Friendly Venice. Yeah, so, I think... Yeah, because it's a Dreamcatcher, I'm feeling a little bit more inclined to rest because of Dreamcatcher. But also, after the first hit, the first big Inferno, I, I might need some more insurance to defend. Because if I don't get defense, if I get unlucky and I don't get defense, I could very easily start dying but you could you could argue i have cool headed so if i have cool headed play that twice that's four block i'm having passively plus the magnetism doing some stuff i'll probably be fine you know what we're getting a lot less liquor on youtube stream i guess so yeah i guess we are getting this so here's what i'm, I'm gonna rush guys just because i think i've gotten enough value and we got to go for the eyes for me that's completely worth it because now we have a weekend consistent weekend that's 100% worth it, guys. But I think we have we got so much value out of this this run so far in terms of like the old coin. One second, we're gonna use the weakened pot here. So I, he's doing more damage because of 
He's doing more damage because I rested. Mm. Magnetism gave me magnetism. Isn't that something? Okay, well, here's what I want to do. I don't mind playing magnetism twice, because then I can start getting some crazy cards. But I also want to play streamline to get the damage going. So I'm going to do streamline, and I'm going to defend. I could do cool headed for the frosts, but I don't want to take any damage. Dark Shackles is nice. It's pretty clutch. We could potentially do Dark right now, 48. I think we can ma we can maximize that, though. We don't have to, to waste it. A single... A single Reinforced Body is going to cover this. I'm going to try to get the most value out of this Dark as that I, that I can. I think Trip is very nice. I think the Weakens is very nice. We got Magnetism again. Let's draw first. Unfortunate. Is it worth to do 30? I think maybe I shouldn't hold on to the value that much. I think this is a... Well, since I held on to it, I might as well do a cast it, right? By doing zap, I'm going to do 30 damage and then also get the lightning out. Versus the potential dual cast on this, which would be insane. I'll keep the dark. I think it's, I think it's not worth... You could also argue that by doing Zap, I'm getting Frost closer to Evoking, and I could use the Evoking of the Frost to potentially give me, um... More block when I need it, right? So I kind of want to do Deep Breath here. Well, I want to defend first, and then do Deep Breath. Damn. Type of situation where I do axe kick. I think we gotta start doing axe kick. Like we gotta start dumping the damage now. I mean, there's a chance we're gonna get into dual casts. At which point, okay, dual cast is an out. If I do du dual cast is an out at least. At least dual cast is lethal, right? And that is an out. This is doing 52 damage. Mm, okay, we'll hold on. We'll hold on. Wow, that's nice. That's really nice. Wow, that's really nice. Wow. Okay, it was worth. There we go, guys. With that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get Water Bottle. I'll be right back. This is for 4-0 on the defects. I'll be right back. Okay. Alright guys, so we're getting offered Fusion, Reboot, Nova. Interesting choices. Uh, I've come to the realization that I feel like Fusion is a good insurance for not getting Energy Relic. Because there's a chance I'm not getting Energy Relic and there's a chance I get like offered uh, the Feather, a Tiny House, and something else, right? And fusion could be the insurance for that. Reboot's kind of nice with uh, all for one. Because also with zero cost cards, so think about it this. Let's say I play a lot of zero cost cards. Then I use reboot and I draw brand new hands and potentially do it again. That makes a little bit more sense when you have things like claw or things that are scaling. And let's say you do the reboot and then you happen to draw into an all for one after. I mean, it could be crazy. But I don't think it has the same kind of value that a fusion would give you. Because fusion gives you some insurance. So I'm going to do fusion here. Alright, so we, we got an energy relic. So I know it's worse for you guys as viewers, right? So as viewers, you get a, it's a little bit worse for you guys to see the running zone. You won't see the intents. But for me, as the player, like I'm confident playing with the running zone because I've played this game so many times. Uh, there's all, let's look at the other options. So we have Astral Lab, so we can get rid of two of the strikes, get rid of the defense, get some upgraded cards. And you could argue this deck, this deck could be okay on three energy. Plus we have the fusion to help us out, right? But this deck is kind of cheap. It has um, 
A lot of zero-cost cards, it has the offer one, it has a, a, a lower mana curve or whatever. And Astrolab could give us some upgraded cards, and it could be, could, could be good, depends on what we get. Orri, on the other hand, could be... I could look for claws, I could look for other things that synergize with what my deck's doing. That could be a good pick. Runic Dome just gives me energy. I don't see the intense, it could be a little bit scary in certain, certain fights. Certain fights, there are some there is some RNG involved. But at the same time, you're getting four energy, so you're playing more cards. You gotta ask yourself, can I make use out of this? Well, I have Reinforced Body Plus, which would give me an extra 9 block if I use it with that. I have Cool Headed, if I upgrade, I get more card draw. If I get a skim, I get more card draw. Now, now, at some point, you gotta wonder, is Fusion... Was Fusion... Like, getting Fusion, is that big enough of a deal? Or is that enough insurance that you can take... Astrolabe or Ori and feel better about it. You like you like it, Jonathan? You don't think we need energy? I don't know. I, th I think it's hard to say we don't need energy because energy helps so many things, right? So for instance, I had magnetism all for one streamline. Four energy would allow me to play streamline all for one in one turn, which could be useful in certain situations. Magnetism and other things. I mean, we do have Turbo, right? We do have Turbo, we do have Fusion. I mean, there, we have ways around it. How you doing, Eric Waldner? Blueky Gaming. Um, Yeah, I, I will switch over to Twitch later. I'll switch over to Twitch later. I just want to go, come over to YouTube and do YouTube live streaming and just uh, give some YouTube some love. Yes. So fusion is worse turn one than a relic, exactly. So turn one fusion right now is two cost, and that's low tempo, not doing anything at all the first turn. And the next turn, then I can get the energy. So you got to think about turn one as well. It's a hard choice, guys. It's a hard choice. Oh, streamline offer one. They, they synergize with each other, right? Because streamline goes into zero cost, which makes offer one pulls it back. So they synergize with each other. Um. I'm gonna go for the running dome, guys. I'm going for the running dome. And I'll, I'll discuss at certain points where I feel like, okay, this could be variable. Because <clears throat> there is some RNG sometimes. Uh, as far as path is concerned, I like this path a lot because we don't have to fight an early elite. We get three rests. And if I'm feeling frisky, I can do an elite. If I'm not, I just go for the late shop. Avoid the elites altogether. I mean, that is, that's very, like, cowardly of me. But it's also smart because the elites could kill your run. Like, for instance, if it's the Book of Stabbing, I'm probably dead, right? So I'm going to go over that, that route. This is 22 damage I'm looking at. So right off the bat, Reinforced Body is blocking for 36. We could block with 3 and feel okay. We can even block with 2 and feel better about it. If I block with 2, then I could do Fusion, and then, then I'm getting 18 block. Taking 4 damage, but then I have more energy. I don't know if that's worth it. Let's do this first. I mean, what is five energy gonna do for me? Probably not that much. I mean, we'll do it. Fine. We'll take four. four. I probably shouldn't take four. I think that little four adds up in a century 15. Especially in this situation. <laughs> Especially in this situation. I have to use the fire potion, otherwise, I'm taking too much damage. Yeah, so our deck can definitely benefit from skims and stuff like that, because we have way too much energy for what our deck is trying to do. Way too much energy, guys. This deck right now is struggling a little bit. Like, this is the best use of my energy. Streamline offer one. That's the best use of my energy. So, skim. There it is. There's the skim. You could argue rebound is pretty good, too, right? Because rebound does synergize really well with... Rebound synergizes extremely well with the offer one. You can do offer one twice the next turn. And also do... Synergize really well with streamline. You can rebound that. But I would argue that Skim is going to help me have better turns in, in general. Just because I have all this energy that I'm not really utilizing. Yeah, these guys are always jerks. They are. Hi, doing, Franklin Williams. I see you. How you doing? I'll we'll do the Skim. I, don't, I do think Rebound is going to be a, a card I want to take in the future as well. Oh, okay. One thing I'm noticing in, right now in my, my deck is... I'm lacking consistent defense, so I'm getting to a situation where... Uh, okay, 
one, two, the last five, six, eight cards I picked don't have any defensive properties. You could argue self repair is a little bit defensive and go for the eyes does weaken, but I have very little defense in this deck, and I'm actually crafting a deck right now that's like suicidal in, in Act Two. So I need to change my my way of building like drastically if I want to stay alive. I just realized I have very, very little defense. One thing that's nice about Go For The Eyes though is you can you can kind of see... You can kind of see when they're attacking. Alright, we need defense, like, badly. I mean, you could argue yourself for pair... We already have one. I'd rather take the Leap. Leap to me is a perfect card. That's the kind of card I need right now. Force Field. I do have Magnetism, Self-Repair, and then you could argue, okay, Magnetism may drop Panache, it may drop another Magnetism, but I think Leap right now is the kind of card we need. Just a nice, solid Leap. We'll add some cards. We could add some cards. Okay, let's see what we get. We got a Hologram. I think Hologram is useful. Would it be useful to do um, Self-Repair Upgrade? It, it is sometimes. I, I think sometimes it is uh, useful to upgrade self repair. But right now, if I take a hologram, for instance, I would upgrade the hologram first, right? I think boot sequence is interesting. Boot sequence gives me. So, boot sequence does not really help in my situation because boot sequence is, yes, giving me first churn block, but I need consistent block. So, I think consume is interesting, although we don't really have orb generation. If I can get consumed and efficient, this deck could be something totally different. Uh, there's Scrape, which would give you some card draw. Allow me to play more cards. It works really well with all for one. But, um... That's not defensive. Hologram, if you upgrade it, allows me to do all for one multiple times. It allows me to do Streamline again. It has some block on its own way. I could use Hologram on the Leap to bring Leap back. Treat hologram as card draw. It, hologram is card draw in a weird way. You're using one mana to draw from your discard, from your discard, and still get some block off of it. So hologram is probably something I might need. Um, cool headed plus is not bad either because that's two card draw in frost. But I think hologram is better in that regard because I can choose what I bring back. I think stack is a decent consistent block. I think right now we want the hologram. Rebound, we talked about how rebound could be useful. I'm going to take the hologram. I think this is going to make the most sense. We got defrag. I think defrag is fantastic. I think defrag plus is fantastic. So if I can get defrag cold snap, I feel like I have more defense, right? So now I have defrag. I want to upgrade that. And now we can start using cool headed and getting some nice block off of that. That opens up a lot of possibilities. It makes my dark orb a little bit better. It makes my lightning a little bit better. But most importantly for me, defrag is like I can get frost with cool headed and feel better about it. And I can also remove the strike. So now if I remove a strike, I'm still getting consistent defense. And I think we're we're in a great position. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the strike. We're in a great position now. We're in a fantastic position. Now we only have one strike left in the deck. The deck's feeling a little bit more consistent. Like upgrade the the, the hologram. We're feeling like okay, we're doing some stuff. This might be a bad fight though. I'm gonna get the frost. Ah, uh, that's bad. To, to draw the reinforced body is pretty bad because the next turn he's. We'll see what happens. Okay, that's not too bad. Yikes. Defrag. Okay, let's see what we get here. Not bad. All for one could draw into a lot of stuff. Let's just do that. Okay, that's GG. That's not that great. I mean, I guess Act 6 is okay because they're still doing 28 damage, right? We could also do... Just hold on to it, I suppose. I will hold on to it. What do you think of Cold Snap? Oh, I like Cold Snap, but... So the reason why I liked Cold Snap in that situation, because Cold Snap... Oh, I didn't get the self-repair out. Now, I could be greedy, but this guy does not mess around, so I'm not going to be greedy. I think Cold Snap becomes better when you use it for... 
frost purposes. So if you need some block in the form of frost and you have some focus like I have with defrag, then cold snap becomes a solid way to get some frost. It's not the most ideal way, but it's useful to get some frost. I used to value cold snap much higher. Now I don't value it that much at all. Unless I have something like deep frag and I can use that that folk that frost to get some um, some good defense. I think I'll take another hologram. Having to, uh, double upgrade holograms gives me a lot more uh, flexibility. I think we want to upgrade the deep frag as well. Maybe get the cool headed doing some stuff. They might be attacking both, so this is one of the situations where I don't know what's going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I could be taking some damage here. Yeah, we are. That's rough. I think defrag's good. I mean, I'll do reinforced body. Might be taking damage again. We'll see. Okay, we're good. A little scary, though. So he's not attacking. You can use that to scout. I think hologram here for the... Um, streamline's pretty good. She could be attacking me. Oh, we're good. Yeah, we're good. So beautiful. We got all for one here. So we have like, we're doing some stuff. In fact, I'm gonna do turbo just because. Yeah, uh, we have lethal here. This is, this is fantastic. In fact, I wanted to dual cast. Oh, I have lethal here, but the problem is I want to get self repair out. So if I do dual cast lethal, I'm not getting self repair out. And I, I'm actually missing out on some valuable sustain. So I'll kill this guy. I'll bring this girl low so that she feels inclined to, um, to, to heal herself. But that's about it. Like, I don't want to do anything else. I want to get self repair out. Matter of fact, we have magnetism. We can farm bandage up. Now, this guy, this is not like I don't recommend doing this. Because she will scale up. But if I can get a bandage up or two, I would feel much better. Oh, we got apotheosis into self repair. That's fantastic. Only problem is we're taking a little bit of damage. So here's what we're going to do we're going to do flash of steel. Dual casts. And I'm gonna farm it out just a little bit just to like try to potentially get vantage up. I don't know how long I should take it. Like how far should I take it? Okay, it's too late, she's dead. Never mind. Never mind. That's good enough. Okay. We get offered loop, and I think loop is really good. But now our deck's going to kind of different directions, right? So you could argue, okay, reprogram is probably pretty good. Reprogram is kind of like card draw if you have all for one in your hands, because that's going to discard things that you can use with either hologram, we have two of them, or all for one. Reprogram makes sense now. Now that I have two holograms, I can pull whatever I take from reprogram. Also, I could get it back with all for one. Although I'm not that big of a fan of reprogram. I think it's kind of... I don't... I don't... Let's take a look at loop first. So loop is going to make it my first or passive twice. So if I get the dark orb in that slot, we're going to be getting that scaled up even more. If I get the frost in that slot, we're getting more consistent defense. And consistent defense can be really good. It also gives me more scaling and even more damage. I guess the champ, I think there's merits. So I think against the champ, there is merits not only having loop on the frost, there's also merit in having loop on darkness. Because with the champ, the, one of the best ways to kill him is to uh, let dark orbs scale up, try to have some consistent defense, and just unleash the dark orbs. So I think loop is probably better here. You guys like the reprogram? So two hollow. So basically, two, what two hollow is doing is that I can discard the things, and hologram can pick it up, and that gives you more flexibility, and also all for one. But I think loop. I'm taking loop guy just because. Okay, I gotta upgrade defrag. I gotta upgrade all these cards. I have a lot of cards to upgrade. Unceasing top. Wow. So there's the card draw thing. We don't have to worry about card draw ever again. That's fantastic. So fusion becomes a little bit better. So I have all this plasma. 
if I have plasma with loop, which I didn't rec rec uh, think about for a second, if I put loop on the plasma, I'm getting more energy per turn. And with Unceasing Top, I'm playing more cards per turn. That's really nice. Unceasing Top is a fantastic relic. In fact, I wish I was going 100% claw deck all for one shenanigans because I would just be destroying. But we can still do some stuff with that, just not as crazy. I think we'll upgrade the second hologram just so it's not completely useless. You could argue the hologram does take up an upgrade, so it's, sometimes it could be pretty bad. This is a rough fight, though. Extremely rough fight. I'm getting attacks for a lot here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, so sometimes he doesn't attack twice. Sometimes he does the first attack, and then he ends his turn. But I'm going to go ahead and do loop. And full block. Yeah, so he's attacking twice. And now we want to get self-repair out, and we, then we just want to win. That's my goal. Self-repair win. Because he's not attacking now, right? So I can afford to do this. Um, we could win here. But... <laughs> I really want to get self repair out really bad. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to skim again. Are you kidding me? Damn. It's at the end of my turn. So I want to do it so that next turn is guaranteed lethal. In order for me to do that, since next turn is dual cast, it's guaranteed lethal next turn anyways. We can just hang out for a little bit. Next turn is gu guaranteed lethal dual cast. So let's just hang out. Have a good time. Um, I don't know. Play Magnetism, so we can probably get bandaged up. Okay, playing self-repair. Alright, GG. I'm feeling like I need to rest at some point. Okay. Hey, what's up, bro? I'm too legit. Yeah, we're doing a little YouTube stream today, guys. Uh, too legit. Just trying it out. Just trying to you know, give the YouTube, YouTube some love. Beam Cell doesn't have less downside because of Unceasing Top. I can get zero cost cards. The only problem is that you don't really want to be playing these cards against the champ. With the champ, you want to kind of be more controlled about what you're going to play. So I think I'm going to end up not taking the Beam Cell. The Scrape, again, could be useful with the All for One. But because it's the champ, I can't do anything willy nilly. Like, I have to be very controlled about how much damage I'm doing and how I'm killing him. So I want to maybe focus on. Dark scaling and frost a little bit and use all for one as supplements. Maybe I'm missing a lot of value of the of season top and all for one. Stack gives me more defense. I mean, let's take a look, take a look at our defense. I have four blocks, cool headed, skim, leap, hologram, la hologram, and loop. I could take a stack. I think that would help us out. We'll take a stack. I'm going to skip this elite. This might be a rough fight. This might be a rough fight. This might be the death of me right here. This might be the death of me right here. Oh my god. So, I think the defend is better than the weaken. This might be, this might be rip. This might be rip. Please don't rip me. Please don't rip me. So there's two things I could do. I could hologram the defend and then play loop. Or I could hologram the reinforced body and get more block. It depends on how much he's doing. Because he just did a bite. So there's, there's a chance he's doing like less. Like, like he's not going to do as much. He's not going to do 27. It's not the 27 attack. So that can give me the loop to get it out of the cycle. Or... Or he's doing 27 and I'm dead, right? So if I'm doing 20, if he's doing 27 and I use hologram on the reinforced body, I get nine block plus three. I get 12 block, 17. I live with one HP. Do I take that risk? This, this is the problem with running dome. So this is one of the situations where like he could be doing 27 or he could be doing. I think he's doing less. It's not often that he does 18, 27, right? I'm pretty sure he does like 18 and then maybe he does like a 10 or an eight or a 12 and then he does another big hit. 
I'm not vulnerable. Yeah, it's true. There are times where he does like a really big hit. So I'll show you. Like, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do the better. I could do a bigger defense, but I'm not going to. Oh man. I think this is the attack that he does that is like massive. Okay, this is not bad. So we have turbo. We could do some stuff here, actually. I'm gonna get the frost. With dual cast, I'm doing 48 damage, right? With axe tick, I'm doing 7 plus 8, so it's 15. So 48 plus 15 is... Sorry, 60, 63. And that hologram actually get it back. Okay, the only problem here is... I don't have self-repair out, so... <laughs> it sucks, right? I could do stack and feel like, okay, I'm good enough. But I, I'm guaranteeing, guys, this guy is probably doing a really big hit right now. If I do stack, okay, if I do stack... Even if he's doing 27, I still live. So maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's worth it. So what I could do is stack and try to help for self repair. No, 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 no. I already have lethal anyways to legit. I already have lethal anyways to legit, right? So what I'm saying, my whole thing here is that is it worth it to do stack and potentially look back for self repair? He can't just. You sure he can't do 27? All right, we're gonna do this. Oh, now I'm born with Now he's at 27. Okay, my bad. And we got self-repair. Only problem is I can't kill him. You gotta be shitting me. You gotta be shitting me. I could just kill him with all for one, but... Oh, that's unfortunate. Why can't you give me better... No. No. Fuck. That's bad because now I'm so low in life. This is monk IS, guys. This is so monk IS. It's ridiculous. I'm gonna do dexterity part for this. I'm gonna rest and. Oh my god, this fight is not easy. I have to do this. Okay, that helps. That helps. I'm gonna do this just so I can get more cards played. Uh. Uh. Okay, 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 okay. Defrag. Uh huh. I like I like axe kick, but I also like dual cast. But then I then I'm gonna lose. Let's do this. I want to do skim here. Eesh. If I do all for one, I can do dual cast on this and do kill that guy in the back. I want to do magnetism, but these guys are doing just 12, so I, I have to block. This is scary. So now I don't have lightning. Oh, we have lethal. Again, a situation where we don't get self repair. I mean, our damage is great, we just don't self repair. Uh, this is rough. I think Recursion is really good because Recursion can allow me to keep the Dark Orb, right? And when, when Recursion is upgraded, it's going to be doing... It's going to be really nice with Unceasing Tower. I think Recursion makes a lot of sense with the Dark Orb. So I can keep that. And my whole goal is to keep the Dark Orb looped and then do damage and then keep it looped and keep doing it. I'm going to do that. I'm going to rest. <laughs> we're so low in life, it's ridiculous. I think Rebound is not the play now. I think we're going to have to skip. Okay, we'll pop the next spot. 
get this out of the cycle. Let's do the leap. Do the second leap. I wish I could play Magnetism, but I can't. I mean, you could argue that Magnetism is actually... You probably want dual cast so we can get dark loops. So once I get loop and play, this can get dark. The more I keep this looped and do recursion on that, the happier I am. So I don't know if he's doing damage or not. I'm going to do hologram. This is where the dome becomes an issue, right? The dome becomes an issue because, okay, if, if he's not... If he's not attacking, I can do magnetism. And then with magnetism, I can go ahead and just um, recursion and be happy about it. But he probably attacking. He usually attacks a few times in the beginning. So I'm going to do leap. I'm going to do the recursion anyways just to butter him up. Although you could argue streamline is a nice way to get cycled. So let's do that. And we'll keep this in that position for the loop. Oh, he's not attacking. Okay, so we can, we can see if he's attacking now. He is attacking. Okay, that's unfortunate. So we're going to do turbo so we can play more cards, right? Because of the unceasing tap. I'm hoping I get a defense and not cool headed because if I get rid of my dark then I have no scaling whatsoever you could argue okay the frost is going to give me some consistent block and then that's going to be nice and maybe I don't need to depend on the dark orb maybe the dark orb is not what I need but honestly I think in this fight having this looped and just staying there is probably the best bet I do play Fortnite yeah I do Jeff Floor. I, I, I want to wait for recursion, right? So I don't want to lose a Dark Orb. Oh my god, that hurts. Give me some defense. Okay, so we do get the hologram for the recursion. So we can keep the Dark Orb going. And now we can do, do things like stack. And we're good. We, we're good on the block. You could also argue I could do hologram for the, the magnetism. But I think we want to do recursion so we can keep that Dark Orb doing its thing. All for one is bringing back a weaken, and it's also doing zap, so I can get rid of this lightning, but also put plasma in the front, so I can get the double plasma, and that's pretty useful. All for one's also bringing back dual cast to potentially use the plasma, so, but that makes stack a little bit worse, right? Let's do this. As long as I'm not drawing cards, I'm fine because he's what I can do. I can weaken. He's not attacking this turn. Okay. He's not attacking this turn. So we can get that looped. Or what we can do is, because we did the recursion, we can dual cast this and keep the dark getting looped. The only problem is that next turn he's going to be attacking. And... I don't have the best draw on next turn. Okay, so he's probably attacking now. I want to play Deep Frag. I, I want to skim first. So let's see if he's attacking. He is attacking. We got the weakening, which is fantastic. I think we play Deep Frag. That's the best thing for me to do. To keep this scaling. Right? We could do dual cast for 84. We want to keep this dark as much as possible. We could argue that we can dual cast now for 84. Next turn, he's not doing his thing. I can push for lethal. I think we got we got to do it even better than that. There's a chance we're dead, actually. There's a chance we're dead. Because if he's doing 27, we're dead. We'll see. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, my booty's clenched. Oh, my God. All right, guys. So, I think Reinforced Body's going to cover it. This is going to come down to, I swear this is going to come down to a super clutch dual cast for the win. We're going to put all our marbles on the loop. All the marbles on the loop and the defrag that's going on right now. And, okay, in this situation, I don't know if he's attacking. I'm going to assume that he is. But I also want to do damage. So what I'm going to do is beam cell. I'm going to streamline. But then I'm going to do turbo reinforced body. Okay, I think reinforced body by itself for 3 is 30 block. I don't think he's doing more than 30 block. I do want to do this damage because I've got to push for lethal and make that, that dual cast be as effective as possible. So it's either I block for 30, or I do turbo and block for 50. Ooh. 
Ooh, so he's gonna split at 220. So we're still good. We want to butter him up just a little bit, get him to the closest 220 as possible, and hopefully the defrag is just. I mean, the the dual cast on the dark is gonna kill him. So if I draw, there's nothing I can draw because you gotta you gotta think about it. Reinforced body gets rid of all my energy, so I want to draw. I'm not gonna have any energy. The best thing I can draw is a zap. It's the only zero cost card I can do. At least next turn I'm have holograms, so I can look forward to hologram shenanigans potentially with the dual cast, and then I look forward to an all for one, which can potentially finish him off the next turn. So I don't think he's gonna be doing more than there's no way he's doing more than 30, right? The reinforce then turbo, true. The reinforce then turbo, then I, I have one more energy. That's true. That's true. And I could get zap. But then if I get hollow, I'm feeling pretty bad about it because I actually want to. I like the, what I'm having next turn. I could get cool headed, and that's not bad. I'm vulnerable, so there's a way he is doing 30. But he actually, I think. His 35 attack just really. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna reinforce body for full. Just just in case there's a situation that he's doing 45 right now. He's only doing 22. Okay, so we got stack. But here's what I wanna do. We have 74 damage on dark. With dual cast, it's 150. Sorry, 148. Um, if I stack hologram stack, it's not that strong. Because I'm frail. Yikes. If I hologram turbo, then hologram reinforced body, I'm getting six block, and turbo is going to be doing three block again, I, I can defend. Then I don't get dual casts. But I can always get all for one for dual cast and go for lethal. Wait, here's the play. I'm pretty sure this is the play. This has to be the play. Because next turn, all, if I get all for one, I have, I have lethal next turn. I have lethal next turn of all for one. So I got to make sure I survive this. I got to make sure I survive this. If I survive this, we're fine. I just gotta survive this. If we survive this, we're fine. Please don't kill me. Holy shit! All for one's lethal, guys. All for one's lethal. Because we have dual cast in our deck. Wait, I'm pretty sure we have lethal here. Are you, are you attacking? You're not attacking. I have 180 damage. Alright, I'm pretty sure we go here, right? We go. So there's a few things we could do. If we do turbo, I could recursion first. Then I can axe kick that and then dual cast. And that's guaranteed lethal. Recursion. Axe kick. Dual cast. I have to unclench myself. Oh my god. Ooh. Runic Dome. I only get this nervous. I only get this nervous when uh when Runic Dome is in the picture. I said Runic Dome is not a big deal. But to be honest, man, it kind of makes me... It stresses me out. It stresses me out. <laughs> Alright, guys. We have Multicast, Electrodynamics, Meteor Strike. Alright. Well, as you saw, the Multicast could be good with the Fusion that I have to get Energy Gain. And if I do the Energy Gain with the Multicast, then we have Unceasing Top, and we can start playing a lot of cards. Electrodynamics makes my Lightning hit twice. Or AoE, which is good because we do have Defrag. So Defrag, Electrodynamics, and the Loop. So with Loop, Defrag, all those things together, it's hitting... The first one's hitting twice if it's single target, and AoE twice if it's... I mean, there's potential there. Things like Recursion go into the mix. I mean, I like Multicast for the Dark Orb and for the Plasma, but I only have one Dark Orb, and I've been nurturing and nursing this as if it's my baby. Meteor Strike, okay, so we can take a look at Meteor Strike. Here's what we can say about Meteor Strike, right? So we start off with four energy, right? If I play Turbo, I can play Meteor Strike. And then thereafter, I have enough energy to potentially win the game with Unceasing Top. So if we're not going against the Time Meter, we can potentially go infinite. Or not infinite, but do a lot of stuff. So if we get Meteor Strike out with Turbo, then we just go play as many cards as possible. Only problem is reinforced body kind of stops that 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 play a little bit. 
I think Meteor Strike could be good with Unceasing Top and... Because that's unlimited card draw. But I think it's between one of these two. Yeah, exactly. And I think... Yeah, Meteor Strike also gets rid of the Dark. Right? So it's, it's, that's the downside. It's really good with Unceasing Top, but it gets rid of the Dark. I think that's... Not to mention, I need to get Turbo to play it. Which is not that easy. What's that Purple Relic? Hey, this is... Uh, you start off with a Dark Orb. So this this is what I used to kill the, the the champ. This relic killed the champ by itself. <clears throat> I think electrodynamics is pretty useful power. It really is, and it 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 leads me in a position where so first off. So, my deck right now, it could benefit from things that gave me power without clogging my cycle. So my all thing is going to keep clogging my cycle, and I may not always get use out of it. Electrodynamics I play once, and then it keeps giving me value. So it gives me AoE when I, right now I'm kind of lacking AoE. And it gives me single target increased damage. We don't have that much lightning, we only have zap. But maybe zap. I mean, we do have loop, and we do have recursion. So we have ways to make this one zap with loop recursion. It can, we can make it do some stuff. We can make this lightning go a long way. Ha. Uh, Multicast though with the Dark Orb is so good though. This is rough. I think, I think in hallway fights I'm not really keeping my Dark Orb as much. I only kept the Dark Orb in the champ because that was like the for me the best way I saw for me to win. Get the loop out, keep the Dark Orb, recursion stuff like that. I don't know if we're keeping it that much in hallway fights. It depends. This could give me AOE guys, and if you think about it. I suppose multicast is AoE in its own way, depending on how much damage Dark Orb is doing. Thank God the pilot is good. It is an awkward deck. Yes, I sometimes I make awkward decks, but I gotta make it work. Well, main damage is not only Dark, right? Because we have all for one doing stuff. The reason why I didn't do as much all for one shenanigans is because... Uh, I didn't want to push the champ and do stuff like that. I mean, we still have some damage with Streamline all for one. I mean, it's not as consistent. It's not as good as the dark. You're right. I think it, I think even with Zap is only still powerful, and I agree. And I think I've won every single game I take with Electrodynamics. And here's what I'm saying, guys: We have Zap, we have Defrag, we have Recursion, and we have Loop. We can make this singular Zap do some good stuff, especially with dual casts. And it also doesn't clog my stuff. So the only thing that I'm thinking is that Multicast can apply to Plasma. It could apply to Dark, and it could apply to Lightning. And Frost. Electrodynamics is very singular in that it only wants to make Lightning stronger. So that's my... If I am going to go for a card, I'm thinking, okay, Multicast is more versatile. Let's think about the... Actually, here's what I'm going to say. I think I think I've made my decision already. Let's think about the bosses. If it's the Awakened one, we probably don't want to play Electrodynamics, right? If it's the Dono and Deca, okay, Electrodynamics is fine. But if it's Dona Deca, I'd rather nurture nurture my Dark Orb into multicast. If it's a Time Eater, I definitely want to nurture my Dark Orb and multicast. So I want to go ahead and take multicast. Because if you think about the bosses, that's probably the best bet. Okay, so this is a situation where we can do Inserter, Philosopher's Stone, or Lizard Tail. You know what? Uh, Lizard, uh, in Philosopher's Stone gives us more card draw, which allows us to play more cards. And since we have infinite draw, we're probably okay. But I also can't see what they're doing. So that's terrifying. I'm I'm so used to calculating damage that's based on not runic, uh, not philosopher's stone that I may end up miscalculating and getting my ass kicked. I can just see it happening. I think the worst thing you could do is take a runic dome and then take philosopher's stone and feel like you know what you're what you're going to look into because you're probably missing some damage somewhere. I guarantee that's probably going to kill me. The energy would be nice if I was like perfect. I was a perfect player and I knew all the damage. Maybe the energy would be useful. I think Lizard Tail is probably the play. Because Inserter is actually making it harder for me to proc Dark Orbs. I mean, you could argue that we're using Dark Orbs mainly with Multicast and with Axe Kick and with Dual Cast, so we don't necessarily need a channel to proc it. And so Inserter doesn't give us any downside, at least it allows us to do more Zap, have more Frost, do more things. But I think Lizard Tail can kind of save my ass. And especially if I'm trying to use Dark Orb scaling as my win condition. That makes perfect sense to have something that brings me back to life so I can keep scaling. I'm going to do Lizard Tail. It's the safest thing. 
We got the Awaken one. Okay. Um, this is rough because the Awaken one has two two phases. So one thing that I want to get right now, I think, is Claw. If I can get some Claw scaling, I I, I feel better about my deck because I have all for one. I have. Yeah, I have all for one, and I have holograms and stuff. I think Claw would help me out a lot. One, two, three, four rest, or one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's perfect. Let's go. Okay, this guy is a little pain in the butt. So this is a situation where like more energy would be nice, right? Because I have expensive things like magnetism. I think defrag and frost make a lot of sense. <clears throat> Maybe streamline was probably good just to get the damage in. Uh, we can actually bring back all for one, or we can do streamline with, um... Oh, maybe I actually need some defense. That was my bad. Because he's, a... he's attacking me right now. That was a mistake. I should have defended. That was a mistake. This is what? 20 damage? Recursion? 22 damage? Easy. I didn't get self repair out. I should probably focus on getting self repair out as often as possible. Okay, so this is impulse. Uh, impulse means I can scale my Dark Orb like crazy, but I'm a little worried because, okay. If I'm going against the Awakened one and I want to use Dark Orb as my win condition, then I'm going to have to kill the first form without Dark Orb and then save the Dark Orb for the second phase. So for me to do that, I would need consistent block, and I would need to have some kind of scaling, hopefully, or do damage another way. I guess we could do it with all for one. We just need to defend consistently and do damage, and then save the Dark Orb. Or we say, you know what, we don't even need Dark Orb, let's do something else. I do like Impulse, though, with the Dark Orb and the loop. But again, now I'm in a situation where I'm taking a lot of non-defensive cards. Cards that do not give me defense when I play them. And that's dangerous. Because I only have four defense, reinforced body, cool-headed. A skim, two leaps, two holograms, but then it's getting a little dangerous. You gotta think whether or not impulse is gonna be worth it. I think, especially considering that I don't think Dark Orb is gonna be as effective in the Awake One fight, I'm gonna skip here. I know that seems crazy. Okay, uh, I might get my ass kicked here. So, the thing is, these guys, are, they usually attack really hard first turn, so I'm gonna go ahead and do leap again. I want to get self-repaired out. I want to get streamlined out. Mm, damn. Now they're attacking like crazy. Like they're they're attacking like crazy right now. I'm taking so much damage. Yikes. I kind of like feel like doing dark, but that's going to get rid of the dark orb is going to kill that guy. That's not really nice. Let's hope that I'm not taking too much damage. Yikes. Wow. Okay, he's attacking. Uh, so multicast is, I guess, okay here. It's doing killing that guy, then it's doing two to that guy, and then one to that guy. I'm probably dead. If I did strength power, I was alive. Am I dead? Oh my god, I didn't get so repair out again. We're so, this is so monk I ass, dude. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the auto shield. Give me a heal, please. This fight's horrible. Why is this such a rough? <laughs> Honestly, this this whole um, this running dome has been stressful. It's been real stressful. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, let's do axe kick. Let's do hologram. I I guess we do. Reinforced body, because this guy's attacking. So I guess we do reinforced body, just defend, and then let my Dark Orb scale.
Yikes. Do I have lethal is the question. Oh, okay. Ooh. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, let's see this what we get. Ooh, that's not good. I suppose... This is 70... I gotta do the damage now. I gotta do the damage now. I might be dead. One damage. Okay, I keep I keep the I keep the lizard tail. No problem. Can we bring back self repair? Self repair to the bottom of my deck. You gotta be shooting me. Ooh, so here's what we could do. We could actually do some card draw. Like skim, play this self repair. No, but then he's gonna he's gonna stay alive. Fuck. Is there anything I could do to get self repair out without while also killing this guy? That's two. If I do hologram skim, then I don't have enough energy for self repair. I suppose the best thing for me to do is to do turbo, like hologram turbo, right? Then I do sh turbo defend. Def Oh, I can't even draw because of the... Okay, never mind. Fuck, this is rough. Oh my god, if I took Inserter, then Consume was so good. Oh shit, dude. I'm, ru I'm struggling here. I think Inserter and Consume would have been, like, amazing. I wonder if we still take Consume anyways. I don't think we do, because we don't have enough orb slots. I think we skip. Cold Snap can give me some Frost with the Defrag. I feel like we are lacking some Frost. I'm gonna take the Cold Snap. Okay, this deck's getting a little big, and I'm also really low on life. Monka S. I finally got the Self Repair out. Okay. So he could be attacking for a shit ton, or he could be attacking for five. We're gonna find out. It's either a shit ton or he's attacking for five. Let's see. If he's attacking for a shit ton, I can't defend it anyways, right? So I might as well... Yes! 1 HP. Please keep me at 1 HP. You know what? I need I need Magnuson to give me a bandage up. This is so... Monka S. Yes, it's crazy. I think fusion makes sense here, actually. So I can strike any more cards per turn. Uh, hologram could bring back... Recursion, and I can bring... No, nah, I think we gotta do loop, but I also want to get fusion. Jeez, this is hard, man. More energy or loop? Let's do more energy. This is hard. I need to defend this. The reinforced body, probably defending it. I think we want to get the defrag for the frost. I think because of that frost, we probably want to bring back... Cool headed or loop? Or at least recursion. Maybe just reinforce body. Let's do Panacea. Thinking ahead could be interesting. We got the cool headed. I like that. Okay. Please don't let me get procced here. Ah. Okay. It could be worse, right? Because we, um... Do I have lethal here? So if I do all for one, let's say I do dual cast now. I don't have lethal, right? Whew. I'd rather keep the dual cast. So here's what I'm gonna do. That's Panache. I don't see the problem is I don't want to get rid of the dark. That's doing so much for me. But I guess you could argue we could do zap, axe kick, get more, get more plasma. Only problem is that Sender's Bane is stopping my unceasing top. 
So let's just end turn. Rip, rip, rip. Oh, got bandage up. That's very nice. Okay, maybe we're gonna be healed to full. Maybe life is good. Maybe life is good right now. The question is, do we do dark right now? So if we do dark right now, we can play more cards after because of the uh, unceasing top. That's only 80 damage. I think we can make it a little bit better. I don't think he's doing any more than this. Like, he's not doing... Oh, he's doing 37. Oh, we can do all for one shenanigans. Oh, we can get lethal right now. Uh, we have lethal, finally. Let's see if he's attacking. He is attacking. Okay, so let's go for lethal, which is going to be trip all for one, right? Then we're going to bring the dual cast to 96 plus everything else we're doing. I think with, like, mind blast again. Let me just... I think we have damage here. With mind blast again plus dual cast, it's lethal. Oh my god. Another all for one. Cole Sniper, go for the eyes. Whew. Okay, guys. Well, we, we're a little bit healthier. It's stressful for you to watch. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry it's stressful. I'm, I'm stressed. That's the thing. Like, Runic Dome stresses the crap out of me. I'm trying to get for 4-0. I can't see what they're doing. My deck's kind of struggling. I'm sorry. I'll try to make it less stressful. Let me, let me be cool under pressure. Uh, let me be cool under pressure here. Whew, dark is not my condition, guys. It really is. I don't know if we want another all for one. I don't know what that's doing for us. I suppose we can do all for one shenanigans twice. Which, right now, if I had claws, I would be rejoicing. But since I don't have claws, I don't feel it's that good. Because my all for ones are not helping me stay alive. They're not really helping me stay alive at all. I don't know if it's that good. I guess it can be more damage. So if I get streamlined. To zero, and then I do all for one a couple times on it, then I'm doing some good stuff. <laughs> off, off, go for that can help me survive. Yes, it can. And so th the thing about all for one is what it is all for one is potentially a lot more tempo, right? So go for the eyes, just zero cost. It is what it is. It takes a but we do have unceasing top, so it's not as bad, right? Because I'm unceasing top, I think this is actually okay. Because the downside of a go for the eyes is that it takes up a card slot. But since you have go for the uh, unceasing top, then it's okay to have zero cost cards like that. And that can be more weakened, which could save me. All for one... I th actually, you know what? I'm taking it. Just because of the unceasing top. I didn't consider that. I could get a rare relic. And the rare relic could be ice cream. And that could open up my, my whole world. But this guy could also mess me up. And I think we're struggling. So I'm going to go ahead and pass. I don't usually pass this. But I don't know how good our deck is. Let's just think about it for a second. If we're fighting this, he's doing like 20, 18 damage. They may be doing for 13 or maybe do nothing at all. I'm going to be getting days. I'm going to be getting burns. And then he's going to keep scaling. I think, I think my deck's struggling. I'm going to skip. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade. I think multicat. So go with loop is really good upgraded. I mean that's two orbs. Tw so we probably don't want to play powers against the awakened one. But that's like really good. That can make my dark skill like insane amounts. I think multicast is a decent upgrade. I think recursion is really good because we have unceasing top, and we have all for one. Recursion is probably a really good upgrade. I think self repair is a really good upgrade as well. Let's do recursion, self repair. Well, self repair is not gonna help against the boss, but it's gonna help me get to the boss. This could be okay, because this could be, like, blind. I don't really want to lose HP, because I'm, I'm struggling. We got Apotheosis Panache Trip. I think Apotheosis is better, because Apotheosis is giving me all these upgrades. And that means I can rest and feel better about it. I think Apotheosis is amazing, actually. Because, yes, Apotheosis is amazing. Panache is going to be really good for damage. All for one, but... Let's think about this. Panache is really good for damage against the... With the, with the zero cost card that I'm doing, and that could be the damage that I need to kill the Awakened One's first phase while I let my dark scale, and then with the dark scale that I use the second, I kill the second phase of, of everything else. But Panache is a power, and that makes him stronger. But you could argue that Apotheosis is going to give me a lot of upgrades on my defense, so I can defend more consistently. It's going to make the cool head a little bit better. It's going to make all my cards a little bit better. The weaken last longer. The turbo more. And that's going to allow me to defend more consistently so I can just do damage with everything else that my deck is doing. 
try not to play any powers, so it's a very clean and easy fight. I'm gonna do Apotheosis. And it makes it so that I can rest and feel better about it. I don't like the fact that I'm have to fight an elite here. I'm gonna skip. Give me something good. Whoa! Shit! Okay, that's crazy. I wish that I knew that that was gonna be a thing. I wish I knew that was gonna be a thing. I need to get something that's gonna help me stay alive. So, for this elite fight, I think I think I'm gonna use upgrade. I'm gonna use loop no matter what against this boss. I think this is the one thing I'm gonna use. The loop is gonna help a lot with either defense energy or the darkness. I'm going to use loop no matter what. So I'm actually going to upgrade loop because if this is the dark head, I think loop's going to be really effective. All right. We got Pythos's first turn. Feeling good about that. Okay. Aside from that, we didn't get that much damage. Okay. Let's see what we got here. The beam cell. Oh, we got some good stuff, man. I mean, I think our deck upgraded immensely already. I like the turbo. I like the skim, so we can look for more things that are zero costs. I like this. You know what? I'm gonna hologram all for one twice. Here's what I'm gonna do. All for one. Oh, I can't. Oh yeah, I can. You know what? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Let's do this. Yes. Let's do this, and let's just play the lightning, and see what happens. Easy. Easy. Okay, our deck's upgraded immensely. It feels like a whole different deck. It feels like a whole different deck. Let's bring back the Apotheosis. I mean, the All for One, rather. GG. Wow. The true test for this deck is going to be the Elite coming up right now. Take another leap. Okay, let's see, let's see what this is. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Loop. Let's do the magnetism. Okay. This sucks a little bit. That's not very good. Oh man, dude. I suppose we use stack. Multicast is not doing enough. Okay, so we're taking a really big hit. But we're getting the Dark Orb stacked up twice. With, that could be our saving grace. So we use things like recursion. All for one recursion. Oh wait, actually we have to do this first. One sec. Is there a way I can kill this guy without having to waste? You gotta be kidding me. Am I really gonna... Am I really gonna waste... Give me something that's like a damage card. Anything. Give me something that's a damage card. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, okay. I, I got greedy and I took damage. Because I was trying to... Damn. Fuck. GG. What if I self repair? I guess I, I gotta kill him. I can't waste any time. Okay. One of the fans good. I think impulse is good, but again, impulse is a little scary because impulse is. It's not defensive. I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully this is a rest or something. Strawberry. Oh, it's just as, just as good. This is a really rough fight. I, once I get through this, I feel a little bit better. We're not out of the woods yet. Okay. Oh boy. Um, this is so scary. Mm. 
Please don't tell me I'm dead. Please don't tell me I'm dead. Please don't tell me I'm dead. Oh my god. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. So we have... Is this guy attacking? He is. We gotta kill this guy right here. Do we have dual casts? We do. Okay. We can do some stuff here. It's recursion. Axe kick. Yes. All for one. Yes, yes, yes. Zap. Are you attacking? You are. Let's do this. Recursion. Axe kick. Dual cast. Right? That's fucking insane. But let's get this let's get the self repair out. I'm gonna assume. I'm gonna assume that you're gonna die next turn. No problem. I'm gonna take that assumption. So I can get the self repair out. Hopefully I can get a bandage up. That'll be clutch. You know what? It might even be worth. Honestly, it might even be worth to play magnetism, defend up, and try to farm bandages. Because, okay, let's think about it. These guys don't scale up. These guys don't scale up, and I'm not scaling up either, but I have apotheosis. I have decent, consistent defense, but I'm really low on life. If maybe if I get the loop out and the cold snap, then we're okay. It's probably better to... What, I can't even kill him, can I? Wait, I can't even kill him. Never mind. Oh, we might be fucked. We might be fucked. No matter what. We might be fucked no matter what. Holy shit. Oh, we got hologram. For all for one. Okay, I guess we're fine. You know what we could do? We still can farm for banish. So let's do this. I think the best thing for me to do is get all for one back, right? So we'll, we'll do all for one. Mm-hmm. Are you attacking? You're not attacking. Are you attacking? You are attacking. Hmm. That's perfect. So this guy's attacking. I don't know if this girl's attacking. I know that this girl is not attacking, right? I know that this girl's not attacking. So since she's not attacking, this allows me to buy time to look for bandage up. Potentially. Nope. So we just end it then. I was trying to be as like, I don't know, I was trying to try to get some bandage up or something i think conserve battery is fine i gotta use the restroom guys i'm gonna go use the restroom i'll be right back this might be monk i asked i don't know if i'm gonna win this conserve battery gives me more consistent defense it also saves some of my energy skin gives me more card draw which i could benefit from but i already have infinite card draw right so let's do conserve battery i'm gonna rest of course give me something that can help me with my life right now i think the frost helps me a lot only problem with frost is that it gets rid of the dark orb so we can't use it as much. The hologram gives me other stuff. I'm gonna be right back. We have apotheosis. We wanna get that early. Be right back. Welcome back. This might be rip streak. Yep, it might be rip streak. 100. But um, we're gonna do our best, guys. By the way, guys, since we're on this YouTube thing, apparently, you know, if you guys like the stream, if you guys enjoyed it, give, drop a like, do a little thumbs up on the stream, right there, a little thumbs up button. That helps get more of our peeps in here. It helps notify my other subs and stuff like that. It's good for everybody, so let's do it. Oh, this is a really bad hand. This is a really bad hand. Wow. Intense. Okay. So I'm taking a lot of damage first turn. That's something that happened. Okay. Okay. And that's not a good start. That's not the greatest start either, to be honest. Let's weaken you. Alright. I thought I should be doing damage to these guys. Wow. Okay. So we got all for one. Which is going to give us some block with ornamental fan. 
Only problem is I can't play Axe Kick, but I can get another Weaken. But I'd rather play Leap, right? So we could do Leap as well. Axe Kick, I, I don't think we use now. I mean, you could argue if I do Axe Kick, I kill this guy, right? I kill this guy, I don't have to worry about him. My life is good. Only four damage. Not too bad. We got Apotheosis. We got the Recursion. Okay, one problem right now, though, is... Okay. I want to weaken her. But if I weaken her, then he's still alive, and then that's a pain, right? So, if I do self-repair, I get her to be stronger, but then I completely conserve battery for free, which would allow me to draw cards, which hopefully is a hologram so I can get the all-for-one or something else. So, I'm going to do self-repair. And I don't want to give her strength, but I, I feel like I have to. I'm in a tough situation. I do want to kill this guy, but I also want to weaken her because she just got strength and she's doing her multi-attack. So I feel like it makes sense to weaken her. And he's doing around 10 damage right now. He's doing 10 damage. But she, if she's doing the say, so this, she usually does like 6 times 4, right? She usually does 6 times 4, I believe, or maybe like 7 times 4. But since I gave her strength, she's probably doing 8 times 4. So if I weaken her, I'm probably mitigating more damage. Yeah, it's a stereo pot, right? So I can hope that, like, I can hope that I do this and my, I hope that I top deck damage. Any kind of damage, so I can kill the guy. Any kind of damage. I think the weaken is more important on her. That's not damage, and I don't want to play this because it gets stronger, but I gotta keep drawing, otherwise I'm dead. You gotta stop doing this to me. Dual cast. Oh, wee! Oh my god, do we hologram all for one? I feel like we do. So we could bring back Cool Headed, get more card draw, get more frost. Or. So we do all for one, we're getting recursion, we're getting go for the eyes, we're getting go for the eyes, we're getting axe kick. But axe kick is not good because of the dark. But we can potentially try killing that guy in the front as well. Maybe I gotta kill the guy in the front and I gotta bite the bullet. We get dual cast as well. You could argue the hologram for the stack. So if I get a hologram for the stack, then I play the stack and then I draw cards. I draw cards because I have unceasing top. So I can draw again, get the stack. It gives me decent block. I feel like block is pretty important right now. And stack is pretty up there. The alternative is to do frost again. Actually, I could do Recursion Axic on the thing. Actually, I think All for One's fine. I think it's fine. Now that, now that I think about it, because here's what I could do. I can Recursion the Dark Orb on this guy, right? I can still Axe Kick to get the Frost. I suppose I could use Dark Orb now. I, I really don't want to. But if I don't dual cast, I can't draw. And I think she's doing more than 30, 23 damage. So he's doing... He's doing... He's doing like 8. 8 or 7. I should have used the potion pot. Rip. I would have killed him. I still want a card draw anyways, and I feel like we do need to nurse this, but maybe you don't- Now that we have Apotheosis out, maybe we don't need to nurse it anymore. Let's do an 8 or 7. I guess instead of doing all for one, I could have done stack and draw again. I guess the pot would have been useful. The pot would have been better than wasting dark, yeah. So it's hard because, okay, I would get rid of the dark, and then I won't have that insurance for the second phase. For the second phase, we would have to...
I gave her, I, I did two powers, so I think she got up to 8 times 4, or 9 times 4. If I weaken, she's probably doing like 6 times 4, 24. I think I'm alive. Can we, can we assume that we're alive right now? Even if I'm very low on life, can we assume that we're alive? There's no way she's doing more than 40 damage, right? I should have done steroid pot. I should live. I should live, right? I'm barely alive. I'm fine. Wait. I don't know. Base damage is 6 times 4, right? I gave her 2 powers. <clears throat> I gave her 2 powers. I think we're fine. So I want to kill this guy, right? And I want to do... So let's kill this guy. I like auto shields. I like getting this out of the cycle, but I, I think we... So we, I think we blocked him full. I'm not sure... Like, I think we could afford to do... Let's just do this. Doing... She did... She did 18. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. I want to play Defrag and I want to play Loop. Defrag is going to give me more Frost. It gives her strength. And I don't have her weakened right now. Loop gives me Dark Orb Scaling. And if I get the Frost up there, that gives me double the Frost with the Defrag. These are both very good powers. But she's getting two strength out of this. You could argue, okay, Defrag is going to give me Focus, which gives me more Frost. I might be dead here, because if she's doing multi-hit here, then I'm dead. All right, so I could do defrag and loop. She gets up to six strength, and then I'm blocking right now for four, eight, um, sixteen. Sorry, for twenty, I have thirty-one life. But I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I'm dead just because if this is the multi-hit, she's not weakened. She's doing like nine times four. He's not doing multi. Are you, are you positive? Be positive.
Last turn when he did the attack, I blocked for 34, he still did 2 damage. I blocked for 34, he did 2 damage, I'm pretty sure. So he's doing 36. If I do leap leap, hologram stack. He's not doing more than that. Now is the multi-attack. I might, I might have to, I might have to waste my dual cast. I can still recursion and do a lot of damage, but I might have to waste just because, let's see what we draw into. The promise, so here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. If we recursion, we're doing 102, right? If we do dual cast, we're doing 20. It depends on what we draw. If we draw into something good, we can potentially win right here and save this Dark Orb and for next turn lethal. But if I don't get anything good, then I'm missing out on... But I think I need Dark anyways for the next phase, right? You could argue that. So I'm going to do recursion. I'm going to do dual cast. Here's what we need to do. Next turn, we need to guarantee. If we can guarantee we get all for one next turn, I think we win next turn. If we can get all for one next turn, I'm pretty sure we win. I use steroid pot, I pop the fuck off, and we dance like a monkey. Let me just let me just see real quick. Let me just see real quick. I'm getting hype. I haven't even won yet, but I'm getting hype. Give me a second. Um. Okay, I think it makes sense to turbo, but. There's a situation, there's a situation that if, if I turbo and I draw into all for one, that's extremely bad. So we don't want to risk that. We don't want to risk that. I'm going to haul the Grim. I'm going to proc him. Well, he's going to get proc. No, I'm going to proc him with either a streamline, swift strike, whatever. I'm scared that we draw into offer one week. So, conserve battery is already up. So, we, we benefit from actually playing less. So, let's hologram. And let's do a cold snap. Because that can give us... That can give us frost, which could be useful. That could be useful. That could be useful. That's still more block that potentially I don't have. So, I'll, I'll do that. Don't draw into offer one. Okay, that's fine. Give me... Do I have multicast in that deck? I do, right? I got the all for one. We also have hologram multicast, I'm pretty sure. Give me a second. Guys, let me just do the math real quick. Hologram multicast is, is 3 times 126. Is that lethal? Tell me that's lethal. That's 3 times 126. That's 300... And 78 damage. Can I get a fucking pop champ? They didn't believe me. They said I couldn't do it. They said GG 20,000 years ago. And here we are. 4-0 on the defects. Ascension 15. 1, 2, 3, 4 is the score. Runic Dome, I'm stressed out of my mind. I'm clenched for days. 4-0, guys. 4-0. And I deserve that, alright? That was not easy, in my opinion. Let's take a look at it. Beautiful. It's beautiful. You can't clip this! Where's the clip? Oh, man. Guys. I think that's the perfect way to end the, the YouTube stream. <laughs> Thank you for the $5 from Ray Challenge. <laughs>